Hello, you found me, excellent. My name's Beverly Hills and welcome to Storytime Online. Here in my tree house of tales, you can listen to stories from World Book Day's 2011 special one pound books. Your World Book Day token, if you have one, is a ticket to a world of imagination and adventure. Take one to a bookshop today and try for yourself. I've got some amazing stories lined up for you, so let's see who's waiting in the treehouse to read to us. <laughs> they're noisy, they're bumpy, and they have special powers. What are they? Gargoyles. Actually, I'd better let Jan Burchett and Sarah Vogler tell you all about them, because they wrote the book. Get ready for Gargoyles Make Some Noise. Hello, I'm Jan Burchett. And I'm Sarah Vogler, and here is our story. All aboard the jet bus, yelled Max Black. We're on the biggest super spy mission of all time. His best friend, Ben Neal, yelled back. They scrambled onto the coach that was waiting outside Old Acre Primary School. Year four, we're off to the library, where two famous authors were going to tell them all about their books. It was up to the pupils to decide which one they wanted to see. Troy Braun's the best, exclaimed Max. I can't wait to meet him. His spy boy books are the most awesome stories in the history of most awesome stories. Agreed, Ben. I'm glad we're not going to be stuck listening to Lily Twinkletoes, said Max in disgust as they threw themselves into the back seats. She writes all about stupid fairies. Lucinda Tellingly spun round and glared at them. Fairies aren't stupid, she snapped. The Princess Castle books are lovely. They're full of magic and palaces and glittery things. Sounds yucky to me, said Ben. Max nodded. Double yucky. The moment they arrived at the library, Max and Ben were off the coach and bursting through the big swing doors. The librarian scurried along to meet them, looking worried. She whispered something in their teacher's ear. Miss Bleat immediately flapped her hands and called for silence. I'm sorry, but one of our authors can't be with us today, she announced. Don't let it be Troy Brawl, whispered Ben. It's Troy Braun, Miss Bleat went on. His car won't start. Max and Ben turned to each other in horror. That's terrible, groaned Max. Hasn't he got a spy mobile? Or, or jet propelled spy boots, suggested Ben desperately. Or a spy rocket like in Spy Boy Save Saturn, added Max. That would get him here in minutes. In seconds, cried Ben. I can see your great Troy Braun fan said the librarian with a smile. But don't worry, you'll have just as much fun with Lily Twinkletoes. She tripped off towards a huge hall decorated in twinkling lights. No boys in the whole world should have to put up with Lily Twinkletoes, said Max. No boys in the whole universe, corrected Ben. Miss Bleat ushered everyone towards the hall, where two smiling helpers with shiny wings on their backs were waiting. Before Max and Ben realised what was happening, the fairy assistants popped tiaras on their heads and pressed fluffy pink wands into their hands. There was a blinding flash of light and stars danced in front of the boys' eyes. I've just taken a photo of you two for the local paper, chirped the librarian, waving a camera at them. You'll be pleased to know you'll be on the front page of the Old Acre Gazette next week. And she trotted off. The boys stared after her with open mouths. Everyone in the village will see us dressed as fairies, gasped Ben. We'll have to stay in our houses forever, cried Max. Or go out with paper bags over our heads, added Ben gloomily. Lucinda poked him in the elbow with her wand. You're blocking the way, she said crossly. Hurry up and get in the hall, we don't want to miss a moment of the talk. She rushed off to get seats in the front row, giggling excitedly with her friends. Max and Ben sat at the very back. Secret plan, delete that photo, muttered Max. But how can we get hold of the camera? Asked Ben. The librarian's right in the front, she's miles away from us. I'll crawl under the chairs, said Max. Like Spy Boy in Spy Boy and the Theatre of Death. He was just diving under the chair in front, when Miss Bleat plonked herself into it, she peered down at Max in surprise. Whatever are you doing? She asked him. He hurriedly scrambled up. Just making sure your seat is, is fairy proof, Miss. Bad luck, Agent Black, hissed Ben as Max took his seat again. It's all right, Agent Neil. 
I've got a new plan, replied Max. We get up on the roof, lower ourselves with a fishing rod and... All of a sudden, a shower of sparkles fluttered down over the stage and tinkling music wafted out from the speakers. A plump lady in a pink tutu and wings skipped out and gave a curtsy. Hello, children! She trilled. I'm Lily Twinkletoes. Are you ready for a super sweet fairy adventure? Yes! came an excited chorus from the girls. No, groaned Max and Ben. But as the music died away, they heard gruff, growly chuckles coming from somewhere in the room. Max sat bolt upright. Our troubles are over, he said in Ben's ear. Our gargoyle friends are here. The gargoyles were ugly stone statues that hung on the ancient church next door to Old Acre Primary School. The boys had been delighted when they discovered that the little creatures could come to life and liked nothing better than to play tricks with them. Awesome! replied Ben. But where are they? The boys looked eagerly about the hall, scanning the walls, the ceiling and the balcony that ran round the sides. There, on that window ledge, hissed Max, as four grinning faces peeped out from behind a curtain. It's Cyrus and Jelly and Toby and Theo, added Ben. Brilliant! They'll be able to help us get the camera. Pop! A grinning gargoyle appeared under Miss Bleat's seat. Max activated his spy radar. Lion's mane, stony skin, cheeky gleam in his eyes. Max knew what that meant. It was Zack. Every gargoyle had a special power and Zack could make himself invisible. Tinsel and tiaras! Zack burst out, pointing at the boys in their fairy decorations. Tinsel and tiaras! Miss Bleat swung round to glare at Max and Ben. Zack popped out of sight just in time. Sorry, miss, called Ben. I didn't mean to shout out tinsel and tiaras. I just got overexcited. Lily Twinkletoes is such fun. He wriggled in his seat and flapped his hands about. Tinsel and tiaras, he chanted feebly. Miss Bleat beamed at him. I knew you boys would like the fairies. As she turned back to join in a song about waving wands and fluttering feathers, Zack reappeared, chuckling. You've arrived in the nick of time, whispered Max. We need help. He quickly told Zack about the ghastly photo and their secret plan to delete it. And I know the very gargoyle who can help us get that camera, he finished. Cyrus. You're right, said Ben. Cyrus can use his special power to sing everyone to sleep. Then we'll just have time to delete the photo, announced Zack. Gargoyles to the rescue! Pop, he vanished. Pop, he reappeared. Don't forget to cover your ears, boys. In a flash, the boys had their fingers in their ears to stop themselves falling asleep too. And just in time, Cyrus was already stepping out onto the window ledge. The gargoyle flung out his arms and opened his mouth. Children and teachers closed their eyes and slumped in their seats as a beautiful lullaby filled the hall. Max grabbed Ben's arm. Time for our secret plan. They dashed up to the librarian, who was fast asleep. Max tried to ease the camera out of her grasp, but she grunted and gripped it more tightly. It's no use, he hissed. I can't shift it. We need to get out of here, said Ben, before everyone wakes up. Then we can make a new secret plan with the gargoyles. They sprinted out into the corridor, threw down their wands and tore off their tiaras. The place was empty except for a security man who was snoring loudly with his head on his desk. Toby, Theo, Cyrus and Jelly burst out from behind a leaflet stand and scampered over to the boys. Pop! Sack appeared in the middle of them. Thanks, Cyrus, said Max. We may not have got the photo yet, but at least we got out of there. I was beginning to feel my brain turn sparkly. Jelly nodded his pterodactyl beak. I'm awfully glad we decided to hide in the school bus and come with you, he said earnestly. Watching the humans fall asleep was jolly funny. But not as funny as seeing Max and Ben in pink glittery things, said Toby, his golden eyes brimming with mischief. I haven't laughed so much since Cyrus hid in the vicar's fruit bowl and pelted him with bananas. At that moment, the security man gave a huge yawn and began to stretch. Hide, said Max urgently. Everyone's waking up. Ben spotted a scruffy door behind them and pushed it open. They all tried to rush through it at once and fell down in a tangle of arms and legs and wings. At last they were inside and Toby slammed the door shut. The room was plunged into darkness. We're safe, whispered Ben. But where are we? 
Max fumbled about the wall trying to find a light switch. I can feel books, he said, running his hands over the spine. Hundreds of them. Thousands. And they're really dusty. Why, t An almighty sneeze exploded above their head. Who was that? Came Theo's voice. Was that you, Max? Not me, said Max. Nor me, said Ben. Nor, Nor us! us, cried all the gargoyles together. Then who was it? quavered Toby. How did you get together to write books? We were already friends and we already had children and I took my children to a museum one day and my daughter, who was two, was very scared of a lion skin rug and shrieked, don't write the flat lion! And I told Sarah about it and we decided that would be a good title for a children's story. And we wrote it, didn't get anywhere, but we wrote more and we enjoyed it so much that we carried on and finally we got published. Do you think it's harder or easier to write as a team? Well, we've only ever written as a team, so it's hard for us to say how it is to write alone. But we think it's much easier because it doesn't ever get lonely. If one of us gets stuck, the other one often comes up with an idea or goes and makes a cup of tea. So we like working as a team. Did you try out your gargoyle stories on other children before they were published? No, we haven't tried out any of our gargoyle stories on children. Some of our reading scheme stories are trialled in uh, junior schools and infant schools, but the gargoyles we haven't tried on anybody. Occasionally when we go to schools we do um, read a little snippet of a new book that hasn't been published yet, but that's all. Do you have a favourite gargoyle? Well, yes, for me it has to be Toby because he was the first gargoyle we ever met and also because I like Toby's special power which is being able to fly and that would really be the special power I'd like to have. But you like a different one best, don't you? I like Rufus who's a great warty gargoyle who can turn into a skeleton. He makes me laugh, he's got a lovely face. Though we're very fond of all of our gargoyles yeah. really. we love them all. Love them all.